come back to the regular live shows after we just did the content marketing power up in April and I literally went live every single day. And to be honest, it's been a mess behind the scenes because as you might have seen, the name changed. We are moving, I am moving from Automated Dominate to Bulletproof Your Business, that's the new show name, as well as now the live show has its own YouTube channel now. So make sure you go head on over there. That's where all the magic is happening. That's where the best things are gonna be. And also big shout out to Restream.io who actually makes it possible for me to be right where you are watching right now if you are not watching on YouTube. Love those guys over there um, giving us an amazing tool to multi-stream into, I don't even know how far I could take this. I think about like, 30 plus platforms, you know me, I like to be efficient everywhere with just one click. And today we are starting off the new old show, renamed, rebranded, whatever we want to call it show with my favorite topic, processes, processes, big word. We're going to talk about that too. Um, and as a business, if you want to scale, if you want to run a business, if you actually do want to have a business, you're going to need processes. And we are talking all about today, how to do them right, how to clean them up, what processes are, where are we going? And that is my cue to bring in Dan Holloway, a man is in the house, because what when up? he said processes in the atomic group, yeah. He was like speaking my language, especially when he then was like, yeah, we don't do any bullshit. Let's clean this stuff up. And let's introduce you. Look at that big screen all there. Ooh, the man. Oh, it's me. <sighs> right. You right. have one of the shortest bios I have ever gotten from any of my guests. To the point and simple, Dan is Holloway that? is a business coach helping creative entrepreneurs push past the bullshit most people teach and instead really get to the simple core of how to start, grow and scale your business. And now That's you nice. guys know why I had to have them on. I was in the house. Yes, my girl up in Sacramento, if you are still in Sacramento. Um, processes. How did you yep. end up? So let's let's start there. Let's start before we go into the whole what processes are and why and how. How did you end up in this place? Coaching, mentoring, talking processes. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to go way back when I had a lot more hair. Actually, hair on my head, not hair on my face. Um, <laughs> so when I, I left school, like loads of bullying, loads of like horrible experiences, left school pretty much as soon as I could. And I, long story short, I could tell a long story, but we haven't got time for that. Long story short, I ended up for, literally falling into a job at the age of 17 um like snotty nosed completely useless not having a clue how to like speak to adults at all like from the playground into a business internet provider um as a first line support engineer um like learning the ropes two three four hundred calls a day you know depending on how mad it was going whether there was an outage or not um figuring out how not to be punched in the face by my peers because I was like immature and <laughs> childish because um, I'm 17 you know I had no clue yes 17 like really baptism in fire put it that way um so it was it was very very apparent to me very early on in my career like literally from like day two um that when you do things in the business world it needs to kind of be efficient and it needs to kind of work and you haven't really got time to just mess around and fluff it and kind of just put it together with sticky tape a lot of people do that but i in none of my jobs i ever could <laughs> and that that kind of leads me right into like who cares about questions um Go on. Hit me. yes you didn't have the chance but as you already mentioned it's like but a lot of people do there is it's like hey guys i'm guilty of it especially when we talk small business when when you are starting out as a solopreneur, when you are running small, let's be honest. I literally, behind the scene in the green room, I was talking with Dan. I'm like, I'm redoing everything in my business right now. Literally everything. Yep. It's a shit show behind the scenes because it's like, clear screen, let's do this fresh. Um, mm -hmm. So how, how often do you run into being blessed of actually having to work with company having to work having worked with companies where you didn't have a choice but how often do you see the opposite of all of that where it's me i'm like i'm i'm the living example i know what to teach because i screwed it up myself how yep. how often do you see one to the other so i'm actually i'm going to answer that question in a bit of a way that you may not expect um, because it's it's how I kind of think about it. Um, it's, it's how I've learned over the years to do it. So, I mean, like I said, I, I started an ISP. I was an IT manager by the age of 20. I had my first mortgage at the age of 20, actually. You know, I ran my own business, best part of my 20s. Um, spent about 10 years in private equity and venture capital-backed businesses, you know, like scaling like a £5 million turnover business to like a £120 million a year business, like proper crazy scale. So I, I really do know the from one end, like from the solopreneur doing all the work yourself, because that was me, all the way to, you know, 350 people across five countries, 120 million, um, you know, turnover and valuation business. And the one thing I can tell you from, from all of that is most of the processes implemented have absolutely nothing to do with the outcome that they're there to actually apparently fulfill. Um, most of the time, what I found was they were actually either implemented due to a stress relief mechanism, and we'll get into that in a bit, or they were there to service some kind of internal political or bureaucratic crap that actually just didn't help anyone, namely the end users or the customers. And I, I had this rule, um, especially in private equity and venture capital backed worlds, um, because you know, if you've ever worked in those environments, you, you basically are told by a bunch of accountants sitting in a boardroom somewhere on multiple six-figure salaries, you basically just look at board reports and say, we should do blah, because I read the lean startup at the weekend and you can scale any business to be a billion-dollar valuation unicorn. And we're all sat there kind of like on the cold face, as it were, thinking, are you nuts? Like, did you actually fall out of bed and hit your head? Like, fuck. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that we had being thrown at us all the time. And we were always told we need to grow revenue, we need to cut churn, we need to limit customer complaints, 
We need to scale a business. We need to launch new products and we need to compete and be innovative. And by the way, we've got six months to do it, 12 months to do it, three months to do it, a week to do it or whatever. And it was impossible. Um, so what we had to do was find ways of figuring out how to at least look like we were doing something or how to pull rabbits out of various orifices and actually do it. Right? So yeah, a lot I of the time... That's that's one um, of the things where it's like, yeah, done yesterday, but there is there is more of a reactive going on rather than a proactive. Yeah. And, and like I said, I mentioned earlier, it's... I said I get to it. No, I'm just getting to it. Um, the, the mindset behind processes is if you get put in a situation like that, whether it's venture capital backed, whether it's your own business and you're kind of, you know, you've got revenue challenges on one side, you've got like, you know, customers screaming at you on another and you're like, I'm in the middle thinking, ah, kind of thing. It The, the end result of that is the same. You basically are there full of stress or anxiety and all these emotions running around because you're just thinking, Oh shit. Um, and from a, a psychological point of view, because I, I do go involved in psychology and the mindset side of stuff as well with what I do with coaching and mentoring and everything. Um, a misconception is that there's this whole kind of like fight or flight analogy that a lot of people think, yeah, fight or flight. That's actually wrong. It doesn't exist. Fight or flight isn't actually accurate. From a psychology, a psychology point of view and psychologically the way we think, which is why processes are often implemented badly, is we actually freeze first, then we flight, we run, and then we fight. So if we can't freeze, we run. If we can't run, then we have to fight. And that's the way that our, our psychology has evolved through our biology over the years, right? So when that happens, if we're in environments where we're like, you know, we've got customers screaming at us one side, revenue challenges on another side, board members kind of like demanding whatever, you know, every man and his dog and his woman in a pet hamster kind of doing somersaults on the moon, because let's face it, you know, that's apparently possible with a budget of nothing. Um, <laughs> but when all that goes on, the natural state of someone is to freeze. But we can't freeze necessarily because we just read an email or something demanding whatever. We get stressed out and we sit there and the the equivalent in our businesses of freezing is to procrastinate. And the yeah. best way to procrastinate is it's to plan busy. and to be busy. Get busy planning. Yep. And to Im implement systems, to read a book, to watch YouTube videos about how to do something, you know, no, no, to strategize. Do we, don't, we don't do that. We exactly. Don't watch YouTube. No. So procrastination is the, the biological manifestation of the freeze response to stress. But what really we have to do is actually figure out whether or not what we're looking at in the, in the moment is actually a risk or whether it's all in our heads. Most of the time, it's all in our heads. And we can just say to it, I don't care, jog the fuck on. So, oh, sorry, I swear on yeah, this. Yeah, no, yeah, so, okay. you're okay, not fine. the only one dropping the F-bomb. Everybody on my show that's watching my show knows or learns really fast, we drop okay, the F-bomb. There you go. And, and yes, as Emma said, we watch Facebook Lives. <laughs> but yeah, that's, but that is the, the psychological response to it. So most of the processes that I ever stripped out of businesses, um, whether, you know, small solopreneur ones or large, you know, crazy scale ones, they shouldn't have been there in the first place because they were not actually serving a purpose, right? And the, the rule that I had, um, and always do have to this day, is it's almost like a matrix. So if you can imagine this, I haven't put it down or anything on a, on a slide because it's quite easy to figure out. It's you go through a decision kind of process on this, right? So if it serves the end customer and it doesn't negatively impact the organization or your team, or you as an individual, then it gets done, right? And you go down that flow. If it serves the organization, but not the customer, not the team, and not the individual, it doesn't get done. So going through all those four things, if it doesn't tick all of those four boxes, then it doesn't get done. And when you go through that process, it's amazing how few processes in a business you actually need. <laughs> Because most of the time, 
when processes are implemented, they may serve one or two, maybe even three, but someone along the line, often the customer, sadly, ends up getting screwed over. Yeah. And with with that matrix, let's let's step back for just a second. When we talk processes, let's let's go yep. big picture. When go we on. talk processes, what are we actually talking about? A fixed way of getting shit done. Basically. Uh, and I, I got I got his description, his explanation in the green room, like, yeah, I like this guy. Oh, you're gonna see him more often on my channel. And it's no bullshit. You know, I teach sales by teaching someone how to pick up a chicken in a bar. Like, seriously. You, you <laughs> teach sales by how to yep. pick up. Okay. Yeah. I want to see it, that it, one When day. you break it all down, human psychology is not complicated. You know, decision matrices or matrices are not complicated. Common sense is not complicated. Yeah, but we, because we get stressed out or anxious, to make it complicated. That mm. common sense. If you were face to face with a lion who hadn't been fed for two weeks, would you go up to its nose, face to face, and go, coochie, coochie, coo? You wouldn't, would you? Common sense. You don't do stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm thinking more of the advanced common sense rather than the survival common sense. Is there a difference? Ah, uh, hmm, that's um, a good one. Listening to four requirements again. If it serves the customer first, so the customer is always number one. Because let's face it, if you haven't got any revenue coming into a business, you haven't got a business. So customer, does it serve them? Organization is number two. Team is number three. And the individual is number four. So Individual as tick. in the one doing the job? Uh, anyone. Okay. Usually it's the person who's actually suggesting the process in the first place. Um, the amount of times I've consulted for businesses and like the office manager, I think I spoke about this the other day. Um, yeah, you I was in the business a while back. You posted one where it's like, really? Why? Yeah. Yeah. The longer post you were and, talking about. Yeah, exactly. So the, the office manager in this business were, would say things like, you know, these processes aren't working for me. You know, I need to get more reporting. I, 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 I. It's and they were completely you. oblivious to the fact. Exactly. But they were so stressed out. They were like, ah, I need to get this done. But no one else cared. <laughs> So, yeah, there's, there, there comes that whole play of perception in. So um, how how do you get, and I'm totally going off cuff here, guys. Luckily, Dan knows his shit. Okay. Um, how do you help people make the distinction between, yeah, going through the matrix, but how do I get people out of this habit of perception of really being like, is, I'm just, you just answered that question. I just answered my own question. You get people out of that, that rut of perception by just going through the matrix. Is it actually important for any of those four or mm -hmm. is it just me? Do we really need this? You know, the, the most important skill that I, I think most entrepreneurs and business people in general, you know, whether you're an employee or an employer, it doesn't matter. The most important skill that many of us can actually have and work on on a regular basis is self-awareness. You know, so so I I've been through therapy you know many times over the years, um, and I can almost like self-treat myself these days. So if I'm if I'm doing something, I will feel emotions while I'm thinking about it or doing it or whatever, and I can feel these emotions kind of like in the you know bubbling up somewhere. And, you know, if I'm thinking about doing a change on a website, implementing a platform or buying a solution, or, you know, I see this new shiny object, I actually, I've learned over the years to recognize the feelings that I'm kind of experiencing at the time. And I explore where they're coming from first. And if those are driving the decision I'm looking to make, because people as humans, you know, we buy with emotion and we justify with logic, <laughs> write that one down if you haven't written it down. Uh -huh. Um, because we buy with emotion, we justify with logic. If I can't justify with a you know some kind of logical anchor, the emotional kind of desire that I've got, chances are I'm going to get buyer's remorse and want to take that thing back, or I'm going to regret spending the money. So if the emotions that are driving those are coming from a place that I don't actually need, the thing that I'm looking at buying, I kick myself in the kit in the keister. Can I say keister? 
Is that an Americanism? I kicked myself in the keys, too. I think they know that over here. I know it. But I'm also European. Okay, fine, cool. I th I'm trying to be American. I kick myself in the ass, basically. Um, people moan when I say ass because it's like ass or ass. I'm so British. <laughs> and I just don't do the thing. I don't buy the thing. You know? Um, I know when I'm stressed out because I go on AppSumo and I start buying lifetime oh deals God, that no, I never no, fucking no, used. No. <laughs> do not. No. Though actually, I am happy about my latest AppSumo, but we are digressing. Um, but yeah, it's this. That's pretty much where I'm like, okay, if it's a maybe, it's a no. Yeah. Because if I'm already, I'm like, yeah, maybe no. Especially as women, exactly. the whole the whole dresses, the whole maybe dresses in our closet, no. Mm -hmm. Um, we. We also started talking behind in behind the scenes in the green screen already of I have processes that need cleaning up, <laughs> but what do we what do we actually do? So we do have a running business. Most of my viewers actually do have a business of some sort in any any way, shape, form, level. And we usually have at least a couple of pieces of something in place, some more, some less. Mm -hmm. And often enough, things come around where it's like, okay, spring cleaning, the thing that I'm doing right now, where do we start? Do we, do we go from what we are having? Are we just rebuilding? How do you approach those? If I'm not emotionally tied to it, I, if, the, if clicking the delete button kind of like doesn't fill me with some kind of like emotional dread then i basically burn the fucker with napalm pretty much i just annihilate it delete it shut it down done gone if i'm emotionally tied to it so if the, if the thought of doing that just like fills me with some kind of dread then i'm being too emotional about it and i need to figure out why that is and if it's not a justifiable business reason then i burn it with napalm basically <laughs> and i know it sounds cold but and I'll, I'll explain why that where that comes from actually because the way i i'll explain how i actually do processes and automation because that probably helps where my head goes so um is and this is something i've learned over the years as well i basically view it as you have two different types of processes right or processes depending if you're american you either have static processes or you have dynamic processes, right? Static ones are the things that never change. You know, if you if you send an invoice and you can, you know, you set your accounting software to send three automated reminders if you haven't been paid and the, an account hasn't been reconciled or whatever, that doesn't need a human to do anything. That can be completely automated. It's fixed. It's the same thing every damn time. You don't need a human to go touch that. People who outsource like chasing up invoice payments Why? to a VA, I'm like, well, there's a there's a little thing in zero that you can just click on and you just type set the number to three and you click save like yeah. why are you paying a va to do that crap um so they, those are static processes well, if it can be automated if it's fixed yourself it's like facebook message, exactly hey, by the way did you see the invoice i'm like yeah dude but i also got a live just sent me a damn reminder so <sighs> static <laughs> processes are, are the things that you always automate right because otherwise it's just time sucks that you don't need. The other type, however, are dynamic, which are by their very nature, unpredictable and cannot be automated. The people who try to automate like human interaction or human discussion or anything with, you know, emotive elements to it, that stuff cannot be automated. No matter how many times automation kind of gurus and nerds say, oh yeah, we can automate that. We can put machine learning and AI in there. I was like, like fuck you can. You can't do that at all. Because machines cannot interpret human behavior like a human can. It can try to emulate it. Most of the time we'll get it wrong and you end up with egg on your face. So dynamic processes are the things that you outsource to humans or you outsource to VAs or you set up kind of like process flows or checklists and stuff for. But if you try and attach some kind of like an emotional kind of hook to something that you're automating like a, a static machine based thing, then you're basically trying to humanize a machine. And that's a bit weird, I think, personally. It was like, you're trying to humanize Zero's auto chasing feature. Why? 
<laughs> like, what's he going to give you a cuddle if you're having a bad day? It's, why would you do that? Um, so I don't bother. So I, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little in between on your dynamic where I completely ooh. agree because that's also where you build. I'm, I'm thinking specifically client facing or yep. uh, weightless men. The, the first thing that popped in my head was a Facebook bot. That's the first thing that popped in my head when when you started explaining the human interaction AI pieces. They don't have AI, but um, where the first initial contact of, hey, there is always the same questions happening that I need to get answered when this is happening. Cool. But the moment I'm through this first, this is always the same that happens, which ends up being static. It then switches over to the person where we are then exactly. getting dynamic. So I, yeah. I don't want the audience to think that don't automate certain of those things, but see the difference between where a, a, a whole process can have a piece of the static and then move into mm -hmm. dynamic because you actually talk. It's like, you can't automate totally. your client work. You can automate the onboarding because you gotta ask the same questions over and over again. But there comes a point where it becomes dynamic. So, I mean, give you a prime example is, I mean, just today, actually, um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm looking at actually scaling my own business. Okay. So I'm kind of going through the growth phase and I want to go into scale phase. Um, so that means that I need to be a bit more streamlined with what I do. So, I mean, you can do this if you want. Um, if you go to danholloway.live um, forward slash book hyphen a hyphen call, or just go to danholloway.live and then click on the book a call button. It's quite easy. There's a big green button saying book a call. Um, then you can book a slot within my calendar, right? That goes straight into a questionnaire, like a three-step questionnaire, um, which for me, it's to help me kind of really serve the, the client to actually book a call with me, like exploratory calls, so your prospects. It's to help me serve that person individual better but it's also to help me to qualify that person better as well right because as i'm scaling and i don't want from my perspective and theirs it's no there's no benefit to them jumping on a call with me if they're not ready to work with me and there's no benefit to me spending my time speaking to someone who's not ready to work with me either right it's interesting that you use that exact example because i am moving out of the schedule your call to tell me what you are looking for and I'll send you something. So I, I love the example. It's like, this is exactly what, where I'm changing around right now. For yep. me, discovery calls in the past have been a wealth of knowledge. Where do people have trouble? What's happening? It, it wasn't just meeting potential clients. It was also my research. But I'm at a point where I'm like, I look at my calendar and I have way too many discovery calls on there that are not the right clients that I need to refer to somebody else or whatever. So right now, one of my cleanups that's happening right now is moving this process around where it's going to be like, hey, Evie, I want to talk with you. Cool. Here's a couple of questions I need. Let's make sure you actually fit and I can help you or I can refer you somewhere else. Here's my pricing. They're going to get the whole package of information with the link to schedule so that I can move this around and clean up my, my schedule because it's like I don't need to do research anymore I'll you, right now. I'll give you a perfect example. Literally, it just happened um, shortly before I jumped on this, this live with you. Earlier today, I did a, a Facebook Live, sorry, Facebook, like a, um, a live on YouTube. Um, the event was in Facebook, where I'm actually live mentoring, uh, making Sang through the, the entirety of my 12 week program. And she's doing it live, right? So, like, scary. Um, she's, I think she's a part of us regretting it no because she, she was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it live. And she, yeah, it'll be great. But and then, and I thought, it's hard. You know, it is difficult. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be like sugarcoating this at all. It is hard, right? Mm -hmm. and she's like, yeah, it'll be fine. I, I'm loving it. She was like really excited. But we did the um, structuring your offer section today. And like we were really drilling down into the offer of her business. And she was sweating. Bless her. <laughs> it was really it's funny. It's not easy, especially um, when it comes to your own business. I know. It's hard. It's really hard. 
it's easier、um, to see things for other businesses, the good or the bad, which one ever.、Yeah. But I'm like, yeah.、And、exactly. But quick, quick shout out live, to、though. Annette from Easel. And Yay! We like Annette. Before we, before we dive even deeper into this, because I love it,、um, you guys, you have Dan on the speed dial right now. Go pop your questions in the comment sections. Every other time you get a paper.、Exactly. But yeah, going,、um, so, going, doing all of that life, that must be. But this is, but as, as an example, so we're doing it live. While we were live,、um, I've got a, like a scorecard, like a questionnaire type thing. It's a, it's a gap analysis to figure out where your business is right now and where the gaps are to figure out for you how to fill those gaps, right? So if you go to danholloway.live forward slash scorecard, you can do that questionnaire and just, you know, we direct you. And while we were on that live, I had like four or five people、um, filled out that questionnaire and they, they got their scorecard and they got their report immediately at the end of it. And a couple of them actually booked calls with me as well. One of them booked a call and about two minutes later cancelled the call.、Um, and the, the reason he actually used to cancel the call was just simply the word affordability, right? Because one of the questions、okay. in there, I ask us around you know, how much are you willing to invest? And I, I have a price range from $1,000 up to $50,000, right? And there's like six steps in between about what you're willing to invest in,、mm -hmm. in yourself to accelerate your journey. And for, for him, at the stage where he's at right now, which is you know, fair play,、um, not everyone's at the same stage of their journey in entrepreneurship or their business as others. Right now, That investment is too much for him, or he's investing elsewhere. Either way, he was interested, but he qualified himself out at this point in time of my funnel. Right? I didn't have to do a thing with it. Yep. But he's got complete respect for me, and I've got complete respect for him because he was, he went through the questionnaire, he answered the questions, he was honest with himself, and He didn't take up my time anyway, and not I his, because you know, he, he's just not there yet. He might be one day later down the line, who knows? But that's、and、automation, that's, that's a static process. That's, that's one of the things where it's like, sweet, I just gave you the sales pitch for 20 minutes, and we come to the price point, and suddenly you see the deer in the headlights. It's like, I will never understand.、So Why people do that.、Um, I just had a similar conversation actually with Owen Video about Video Husky, calling them out publicly. They took their pricing down off the website. Why? Why? If I don't fit into that price bracket, you talking to me is not going to change that.、Mm -hmm. Which comes right into this exact thing where I'm like, Same, same with me. I'm like, I've been flying by the seat of my pants with my website as of late. Working on that. Thanks, Annette, by the way, who's been helping me behind the scenes be better on graphics. Gotta love those guys over there.、Um, Annette is cool. But yeah, where I'm like, where am I wasting time right now? I'm out of the quote growth phase. I don't need to research. I know what my niche market is, I know where my pricing is, I know who I want to work with. It is time to automate this stuff so that I am out of the business and I'm not doing that specific anymore and I'm just cleaning up my sales funnel. And when we, with Video Husky, Husky as an example, Video Husky, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> with Video Husky, I mean, taking their pricing down, I mean, some marketers think that's a good idea. Personally, I don't. It's like if your offer is on point and you're speaking to your target audience, Who are in the right place with the affordability tick box、mm -hmm. then checked, there should not be a reason as to why you shouldn't have your pricing on your website. You know, if you, if you take it down, it's either you're trying to over egg what you can actually offer, or your offer isn't refined enough and you need to work on it.、Yeah. That's my personal belief. And、um, like, I hate when companies do not have their prices out. I'm doing、Mine's、my, my research.、Website. I'm doing my own due diligence to know are you for me or are you not for me. I don't want to have to talk to somebody just to figure out that you are out of my budget. 
That's my waste of yeah. your time. That's my waste. I mean, I, I've even got it in USD and um, GBP as well. I've got it in two different currencies on mine. You know, my checkout is in both dollars and pounds. Um, and I even, well, yeah, it's just, well, I'm like a systems dude. So it's just, I, I yeah. do things on a Friday night because I'm bored. <laughs> The last few days, I've been my creative, my creativity has just been blasting. I haven't been working on websites in ages. I'm like, I quit the agency. I don't even know when really. And it's like, I've just been having fun. I get up in the morning. I grab the coffee. I sit on the couch. I start working on the website. I go regular stuff in between. I, I sit down back on the couch at night. And while the, what, the TV is running, I'm building again. It's like, little lit, having fun. So there's a really interesting question in the comments actually from emma um can you stick the one up so costs off um cost benefit analysis of software-based processes but she's also got another quote another comment sorry where she said or even a coach because apparently she hired a mindset coach who um did not deliver at all i feel the pain so that, on this one i've learned a lot of lessons and I'm always careful. I'm always doing my research yet. I got burnt at the beginning of the year and I got burnt bad. I lost 3,500 bucks on a coach yeah. that I trusted that didn't deliver and has no balls to even give half of it back. So, but so I before, much, before but I, I hand that all off to you, Dan, both of those well, questions, yep. how, I, how I look at this 3,500, don't get me wrong, it was a pain in my ass and I was pissed with myself because I should know better and I did not do a couple of things. But believe me, that money was worth to know now I'm never going to run this to a regular account again. It's always going to be a credit card. I'm going to do my research and I'm going to go through the regular funnel every client would go through and not just the short stuff because I know them. No more, no more short ways, no more not checking off the boxes simply because I followed that damn person for over a year and actually met them in person and considered them a friend. But that's mine. Now, where do you want to start? Do you want to start on on the tech or do you want to start on the coach? Or just uh, all together? It, it's the same thing. Um, do you mind if we go into ethics for a bit? We can go into ethics. And Emma, this is not embarrassing. It's not. It happened to all of us. And I know how good a person you are. You trust people just as much as I do. And I know you've done your research. It just happens. So ethics. My favorite. Right. So in in business process automation, systems in general, you know, scaling, entrepreneurship in general, to be fair, um, ethics plays a massive, massive part. I mean, I have an entire section entirely about, and I've even called it um, transform with love in within my program. So the last three weeks is about transforming with love. And before that, there's an entire week just focusing on ethics as well. But I call it transform with love because when you front up how you're going to be implementing, onboarding, selling, and creating your product, if you front that with transforming your audience with love, you by your nature, if you do anything against that, if you do anything that basically makes you a dick, then that is making you a dick. Right, because you, you cannot go into creating a process, creating an onboarding flow, you know, setting up a product, engaging with your clients, onboarding your clients with the intention of doing it with love, which is what I teach. And if you if but if you don't do that, then there's something wrong with you. Right. So I actually call it transform with love. And I mean I deeply mean what I say with that. It's something wrong with you if you if you're basically an asshole to your clients. Because if, if you follow my program, or similar, I mean, I'm not the only business coach out there. If you follow that and, and you really embody love and passion and empathy into how you're onboarding clients and you still screw them over, you have no right to that client in the first place, right? Which is why I called it Transform with Love. Um, but I mean, to, to Emma's question, it, it's it's embarrassing because frankly you're a victim of someone else manipulating you into a sale right and it is crappy and it does happen you know you're not alone we've all been there um numerous times <laughs> some of us and often it's because you 
you've basically been duped by an offer that was over eggs and it lured you into what we call in psychology terms a an emotional buying state mm -hmm. right and you remember i said earlier you know we buy with emotion we justify with logic what you'll find a lot of the time is you know coaches experts out there they use formulas that are actually very accurate very good yeah. when you use them with an ethical kind of process in mind but they also work when unethical people implement them to manipulate you um so this look like say if we think copywriting methods right mm -hmm. there's coming called um, pas so problem agitate solution so there's a there's a guy out there i won't say names because we haven't got enough money to be sued by him because he had lots and lots of money um but there is a person out there who sells a program, right? And I won't tell you the program is, but they sell a program. And he will do a webinar for about three hours, okay? About 45 minutes of it is actual education. An hour and a half is basically him talking about a tragic loss that he and his partner suffered. And then f after about an hour and 15 minutes of talking about in depth about this, this tragic loss, he switches the story. He carves this really kind of well, well crafted story and he switches the story around to talk about how this loss led them to an epiphany, which got them to start their business, form their course, transform their lives. And if you followed their course and you join their program then you could do the same thing but that whole process and bear in mind the next hour is basically like the hardest sell you ever experienced in your life you know just every single emotional trigger nlp like everything just bombarding your brain with with pushy 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 sales but that story isn't there for you to connect with them that story is a mechanism by which they are getting you as the audience you know, and the ones who are vulnerable, the ones who are emotional, the ones who are actually nice, decent people, it's getting you into an emotional buying state where you are in such an emotional kind of like build up hot mess that you you just want to do something to release that energy. And they're offering you the ability to buy that course at you know a price that always has to end in a seven um, to release that energy. Okay, I'm and rounding it up. I have numbers. Exactly. I have my seven too. I'm having fun. It wins in the seven. Um, I ended mine in a five because I cannot can't bring myself to end in a seven. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the, the the thing they do, and they always offer a guarantee. <clears throat> and if you read the small print, the small print will say something along the lines of the results illustrated in the testimonials on the website landing page or whatever are exceptional cases. Do not expect. You know, your results okay. to equal these, they are the exception, not the rule, blah, 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 blah. Um, the guarantee is a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day guarantee, whatever it may be. But if you read the small print, you have to go through the entire course, illustrate that you've actually implemented it, illustrate that you've tried to actually get it work and prove that you haven't actually made any form of sales from it. Then you'll get your money back. The whole thing is basically a an emotional manipulative scam. And it's a numbers game which is why I don't like online entrepreneurship a lot of the time in that world. Um, they, they, that's they, how it works. There's a lot that has been done and that's been doing um, where, where I often reach out. So one of the things that I also do is I usually don't, don't buy just to buy at that moment. I don't care if I'm going to lose 500 bucks. I don't buy the moment I'm buying, which is why I was so really mad about the other codes it's like it literally mm -hmm. took a year for me to buy um but yeah i don't buy right away i'm never gonna buy off of my regular account ever again it's always going to be credit card it's easier to get charged back if if that's what you want to do and <laughs> just sleep on it heck i ordered victoria's secret and which arrived yesterday and i left it just to be sure it's right and i'm keeping it that's literally how I'm going about this right now because I don't want to buy in that emotional state. I know I'm passionate about tech. I'm, I'm super. I could 
spend hours on AppSumo and just buy everything. I am a passionate buyer. I am an emotional buyer, but I now know how to not get caught into that and hopefully not get caught back into one of those coaches. It's all emotion. That's that's all it is. Um, and I say that's all it is because it, it makes it sound like it's it's a small, easy thing to get over. <laughs> but but it's it's tough when you're in that emotional state especially when someone's weaving this story and they're putting loads of proof in front of you and everything else, it's hard for you to say, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to sleep on it. And if the price goes up by 30% tomorrow, okay. You know, and that is, in my opinion, that is automation and processes used unethically. Yeah. Yeah, That's my personal opinion. Some people will disagree with me. I don't care. Um, But I think there are right ways and wrong ways of doing things. And like you say, sleep on it. If you still want it at the end, then if you want it badly enough, you wouldn't mind paying an extra two, you know, 300 bucks for it. And you're going to make it happen. It. I'm like the, the, yeah. the best example for, for me is my NLP training. And like, we had this exact conversation with, with Stephanie Liu, who is my NLP coach. And there was one moment in between where I realized awesome. what I can do with NLP. And I had a full on block. I'm like, I'm not doing this full on meltdown. Stephanie has the okay to mention that actually somewhere because when Stephanie yells at you, you know, you, you, you know, right? So we're going through this training. She has and a I real mom voice, doesn't she? She doesn't. She doesn't yell at people. I'm one of the few that got yelled at. And I'm fine with that. It was, she needed to get me out of my state. It was for me to be triggered to get over that because I realized what NLP can do, but also went through the realization of it comes down to me, what I do with it. Am I delivering on my promise and am I using the tools that are given to me ethically? And yes, I am. And then moving forward in coming back around with the whole money thing, I'm having the the master prac training, which is a good chunk of change that you got to put down for that because it's a two week training. Guess what? I want it. And I'm going to make this happen no matter how. So don't, don't get caught up. It's just emotions, even though, and I know just emotions sounds like what the hell are you talking about? Especially as women's, we have a lot of that shit, but we know it's emotions. You can wear them out. You can, you can work them out. You can walk them out. We know it's just emotions, which means the moment you realize it's just emotions, you can do something about it. You can wait 24 hours. You cannot do the next AppSumo deal. Or you can call out the damn coach that just fucked you over. And if we go all the way back to the beginning, remember, if it serves the customer, so it's the organization, so it's the team, so it's the individual in that order. You know, so we've been talking a lot about emotion. Um, and as you know, as Emma does an example, did it serve the end customer? Would it help you to serve your customers better if you got the thing, whatever the thing is? If the answer is yes, but you, you, know, you couldn't afford it or you didn't really align with it, or you know, go down the down the track of that the decision making process that I, I follow. If if you can't answer yes to all of those things and answer yes to all those things logically and not emotionally, you don't need the thing. That's basically and, what it boils down to. And then you gotta if you want to, then you gotta start digging on, okay, but why did you want it so bad? Mm-hmm. Is there is there something else going on? Is there something else that needs patching or overhaul or what the heck ever. Um, like I've been through again, since, since I did the NLP training, I've been going through a lot of cleanup where I realized a lot of triggers that are going on where I'm like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. So now we took processes, not just into processes, but into a whole ethics. Session. ethics. Well, I can do therapy if you want. <laughs> we can go into that world. Oh my God. <laughs> I got a session with Stephanie coming up to clean up some shit again. <sighs> but yeah, it's like, that's that's where it comes back to you guys. I am all for automations. I am all for bringing technology in where it makes 
sense where you are not losing your personality. I'm like, go, go play with my Facebook bot. She's fun. She, Eva, my, my alter ego. She's, ha I'm having fun with this kind of stuff. I am not losing the connection to my team or my company or my clients or anything. I'm always trying to make it fun. Even with my, my big ass intake form for my clients, when they come in, I send a coffee with it. I have a fun email with it. The whole process of it is automated, but I made it fun. So I do not lose the personality in there and the connection of my clients and my clients know exactly that that stuff is going to be running all automatically. So bring it all together. This, yeah, it, it can be total fun. Have fun with Processes it. should, should help your business. They shouldn't hinder your business. You know, is whether you're talking about processes, automation, Facebook ads, paid advertising on, you know, Pinterest or LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever, um, anything like that, any systematized thing is, this is something else that's actually probably going to help everyone as well. Only automate or systematize that which you've actually proven works. Yeah. Which is another thing. Oh my God. Yes. You just, Yes. Yes. <laughs> there is no point amplifying shit that's unproven or stuff that is inherently already busted. Because all you're going to do is amplify the good and also amplify the bad. And that is that is one of the things that I see so it's often. Like your most I see most you of my clients. There. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like yes. Um, most of my clients come to me because of ClickUp, because of my YouTube channel, because I'm talking ClickUp. I give them, no, yeah, I give them, I answer what they're looking for and I give them what they need. So they are coming in for ClickUp and one of the first questions usually is, can we automate that? Heartbreak, heartbreak right there. No. Stop. No. You just told me your workflows and processes aren't working right. You got bottlenecks in your company. Stuff is not working right because that's usually why they come to me because ClickUp can solve all the problems. No. Mm -hmm. And now you are telling me you want to automate this. So you already have a pile of goo that is not working right because team communication is not happening because whatever it is. Now, the yep. first thing you are thinking about is automating this. Because they're stressed out, full of anxiety. They're a hot mess. Yeah, that's where where I always point out processes and implementing all of this and getting this done is not a short-term thing. This is a long-term scaling your business, cleaning up. This is your YouTube strategy. It's not your Instagram explode kind of blah, whatever, throw mm -hmm. a couple of hashtags in. This is a YouTube monetization strategy. This is not going to happen within a month. This might not even be happening within six months. Matters the size of the business. It's this is this is a long haul. This is a long term. Should goal. I throw some stats at you? Oh yeah, come. I love numbers. Bring on like numbers. Stats. So, some of these are depressing, but they're true. Um, they vary according to market, industry, niche, country, and so on. So I'm going to average it out a bit. But about 84% of businesses actually fail by their fifth year of operation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five years. We're talking marathon here, not a sprint. Okay. 84% fail by the fifth year. 70% of those that actually go beyond year three into year five only manage to get there before failing by taking on personal debt. Yeah. And it takes on average seven years to actually pay that personal debt back, you know, credit cards, loans, and so on. Um, so the people who go into entrepreneurship or business ownership, you know, system automation, you know, sales processes, marketing, flows, tools, you know, tech, whatever, whatever part of entrepreneurship that you're looking at, I'm doing like the whole hand waving thing here. But whatever part you're looking at, the if you go into that with the mentality of I can sprint this hundred meters or hundred yards and get this win and then I'll be great. You'll be sprinting those sprints for three years before you have to make a decision of loading up your credit card or taking a loan or 
calling it a day. If you go into a business with the mentality of it is a marathon, not a sprint, and everything you do, you have to commit to for at least three years, most likely five. And if you've got investment in research and development, you know, um, like a Nets, for example, with Easel, that's a five to 10 year gig because there's, there's a lot of invested time in research and R&D and development and everything. Um, so for those kind of businesses, it's even longer. But it is a marathon, not a sprint. So every automation you do, you're not setting up for a month or two months or three months or six months or whatever. You're setting it up for two years, three years, five years, 10 years. You know, you'll tweak it along the way, but it is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so don't go into it the mentality of, oh, I'll do it for three months and I'm going to change and switch something else. Because you've not got the right mindset if that's you. Sorry, that sounded a bit harsh. <laughs> no, I'm like, and my audience knows. It's like, I'm, I am I like straight to the point, this is how it is. Deal I'm with preachy it then. Because it doesn't, it doesn't help anybody if we just paint it in worse colored glasses. It, it doesn't help anybody. So yeah. I love it. I did not have all of those numbers, but yeah, I knew the whole five year is, is that big pain point. And if you're doing the sprint, it's, it's that feast or famine thing for three years. Oh you're like, you're constantly, God. you know, you get a win, you're getting loads of money. Yay. Everything's great. And then that money runs out and you're like, shit, I've got no like pipeline and oh, uh, how am I going to pay bills? Ah, and you're just doing that for three years. You know, it doesn't work. It's not sustainable. You know, and there's, if, if, <laughs> there's, there's a lot that I have realized in my business where the self-awareness comes back into where what are we motivated motivated by it's like to me i'm motivated by pain that's actually something that's biting me in the ass right now because the moment yep. i do good i start self-sabotaging myself to trigger that pain again to get that motivation back you're and, an away from person yep i'm an away person and that is one of the sessions that i have coming up with stephanie to switch that around because i am tired of self-sabotaging myself dropping back down, creating that pain by myself, by not doing the thing I know I should be doing to then get motivated mm -hmm. again, to then do the thing I should be doing again. So it's like, I, I say, so, share something with you myself. a bit personally. Um, this, this actually is not quite process related, um, but it, it does help towards the mindset of being an entrepreneur and figuring out why you're doing the thing. Um, so, I mean, it's not a story that I share often, but like I said, earlier in my life, like all throughout school, massively bullied. So the, the, the school years for me, so especially secondary school, um, high school for you guys, I, it, they're a big blank. You know, I, I genuinely, I, I remember very, very little. My brain has blocked it out. Um, to this day, I remember flashes, most of them negative. Um, you asked me granular detail, even like the names of people who were in my class, I couldn't tell you. I have no clue at all because um, I've, I've protected myself and I've just locked it away. Um, but there were, there were a number of things that I used to do throughout my 20s um, up to the point where I met my wife, actually, before she was my wife. Um, I actually went to therapy to stay with her because I actually said to her, I need to go into therapy in order to be with you because I need to figure out why I'm going to sabotage this relationship because I will, yeah. but I don't want to um, because, you know, I, I didn't want to lose her. So I went into therapy to be with my wife, which she thinks is a bit weird, but she kind of thinks it's almost romantic in a way. <laughs> so when I went into, go on. I was going to say, so when I, I went to this therapist, um, he got me to do this, um, this exercise when he was like, I think back to the time when you felt the the emotions you're feeling out. He got me to like go with the emotions, right? Um, and it was actually a time at school where, long story short, I I ended up getting punched in the back of the head in front of the entire school um, by one of the biggest bullies and laughed at by a good couple hundred people. Um, I had been stuck in that point for about 20 years, right? Um, and the the way that he got me to to unlock that, and whether it's NLP or you know some kind of like process, I'm not sure. Um, but he he said, imagine that whole scenario, um, and I do this myself um, when I'm thinking, you know, in business, when I'm feeling something, when I'm feeling stressed out, when I'm thinking about implementing something or change in my business, I think about where the emotion's coming from, right? And I 
I look at that and I, I close my eyes and I, I feel the emotion as I did at that point, looking back at that moment back in school. And when that emotion is coming up, I picture myself in that state back, you know, whenever that was. And the person who, or the thing that is causing me to feel that emotion, I give it like a clown nose or clown feet or something like just randomly absurd. So in this particular instance, it was clown feet. So he's like, give him clown feet, make it brighter. You know, the color's brighter, you know, the everything's brighter and more vivid. And I was like, relive the whole thing again. And it was like, wow, give him a clown nose, go through the whole process again, the whole story in my head, you know, clown hair, make it bigger, you know, loads of clown makeup on. And like, if I was afraid of clowns, I'd be completely ruined for life. <laughs> but I'm not, that's fine. <laughs> and he got me to do the, photo, the whole thing again and again and again and again. Um, and that night, I spent around like two hours or so just going through this this whole thing, like over and over and over again, making it more absurd. And that evening, I didn't sleep at all. Like literally, I laid awake in bed. I couldn't sleep because my brain was just firing off all of these memories from school. Like not, you know, necessarily good ones. Um, I couldn't remember anything at that point. I actually remember a chunk now, not nearly as much as I probably should. But these memories started firing off because I was unlocking all of these these parts of myself that I'd locked away. And literally the following day, I felt more confident. I felt, you know, I think about a few days after that was when I did my first Facebook Live because I didn't care what anyone thought about me anymore. Like it started video marketing um, routes that I took. It started like the, the coaching, the mentorship, feeling confident in myself. You know, up until that point, I was the quiet guy who, you know, always wore dark clothes, stood in the dark corner of the bar, never spoke to any girls, you know, single for ages, find someone and sabotage it. I would be that person. Um, proposed after six months to the lady who I started seeing, um, married a year later, two kids, you know, that's because I unlocked the things that were holding me back. Um, and I think a lot of people, the reason why I say this is because a lot of people implement processes, implement systems, they make changes in their business, they make, you know, these wide, big changes, but it's not for the business. It's for a reason you haven't actually unlocked yet and you you don't know what it is. You don't know why you're doing it. But I, I urge you to do a bit of self-exploration and figure out where those desires are coming from because chances are they're not going to be coming from a place that's actually wanting to serve you. Yeah. And I mean, that's what I learned. That's a bit of a deep story there. <laughs> And, and same here, yeah. Usually those those triggers are rooted in something in the past that in, in your case was a big thing, but sometimes it also is something, just a comment your dad said or, or a side yep. note your mom dropped somewhere and you don't even think it's that big yet suddenly it's sitting, it's sitting right in here and it just told you you're not good enough or whatever it is. So it's I love how how you took all of this around from just business processes to actually taking processes to discover yourself and fix it. Because when you go through the matrix and you check your processes and you got a real, real strong gut feeling about this, why it should or shouldn't be. There you go. Exactly. There you got your NLP coaching, training, talking about therapy going on. <laughs> Anchors is an LP thing, isn't it? I've never done the course. Anchors? Yeah, Anchors is NLP too. Yeah, that's what I thought. The, the I, I should actually do the course. I need to speak to Stephanie about that at some point. When I have time, <laughs> ever. Anchors, uh, so Anchors in a short version pretty much is you bring up those emotions, you trigger those emotions, those memories that trigger those emotions, and you anchor that. So when we say anchor that shit, when a client was like, oh my God, I saw you, I have to work with you. And it, it gives you that emotional, fuck yeah, I can't do anything. Anchor that shit, anchor that shit. So you are connecting an emotion to a, a gotcha. body response, you know, similar to, you know, how smells can trigger a memory or a yep. song can trigger a memory. You are triggering by a physical trigger that emotion. That's kind of what anchors are. Gotcha. 
And Just before we end everything, I want to make sure to take care of Emma and her question. She's like, okay, what kind of questions do you ask yourself to bring that insight forward? So how are you starting to drill into that? Um, I, I actually don't ask myself questions. Um, this is this is something I, I learned and it, it takes a little while. Um, so don't, don't necessarily expect to do it straight away because it, it took a little bit of while with a therapist to actually to help me do this. Um, but the short version is you basically get to a point where you're, you're very, you know, it's quiet, you're relaxed, you know, whether you're, you know, laying down in bed or just, you know, sat in a darkened room with a glass of wine, whatever. Um, and you've just let yourself feel the, the emotion that's, that's kind of like how you feel is holding you back. So for me, it was like, I felt uncomfortable when I thought about, you know, another couple of months down the line in a relationship with who is now my wife. Um, I felt guilty. I felt scared. I felt afraid. You know, I felt kind of full of anxiety. It was just like, ah, kind of feelings. So I just sat there and I just let myself feel them. And then I just kind of followed the emotion and just let the emotion take me in different places. Um, and if you let your mind wander, your mind will take you there. And if you follow the emotion then it, it will eventually lead you to the root of where it's trying to pull you back to. Um, but it, it doesn't happen straight away. It doesn't, it's not an immediate thing. Um, but that's what I do is if I feel an emotion coming up, I'm like, where's that coming from? Hmm. Okay. Uh, and I just, I just see where it takes me. Um, and it, it never fails to take me somewhere. Usually places I don't want to go. <laughs> Yeah, but we can't take care of it if we're not going there. And the moment you are there and you take care of it, your life is going to be better for it. And Try I and think do that in the boardroom. That is, that is a That's perfect fun. end to an amazing show. I might just going to have to watch this one back myself too. You're welcome. <sighs> Hashtag mic drop. I could drop my to mic, my video like editor, We need that as a gift. That mic drop right there, we need that as a gift. Just say it. Yeah. My minion one is actually my favorite. The minion mic drop. Oh, yeah. That one is good. He also got yep, the Yeah, that's whole... the one you used the most. <laughs> if you look at the analytics of my gifts, it's definitely the minion mic drop that's the most used. Uh, I have, I think, my, uh, the dog on the trampoline for happy birthday. That is, that just... Because uh, I yep. do give, I do give for Facebook birthdays all the time, yep. and that's that's always the one. Oh, the baby that kind of is running into a room and then kind of does the whole, ooh, and oh, then yeah, turns around and runs away again. Yeah, yeah. Mondays. That's my favorite Facebook groups. And then starts dropping grenades. <laughs> I like those ones. Thanks everybody for sticking around. Ending that on a fun note with a whole bunch of happy gifts. Dan, thanks for coming on. I loved nodding out with you, talking about personal but also business processes you yeah. have a great night damn wait a i'm second. gonna it's 10 o'clock no not too bad i think it's an hour later yeah, it's all right get some snacks go to bed we get woken up at five in the morning by the kids i'm sure holy moly <laughs> i'll see you in the atomic loop and i see everybody over on the new youtube channel as i mentioned if you haven't seen it in the beginning Go subscribe so that we can actually get a custom URL over there. That's where the live show is going to be housed now. And I'll see you again next week with the vetted consultant table. And we are going to talk click up agency setup and all that fun stuff. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining you all. Have a good night.